Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys. Just letting everyone get settled in here. and We'll get started here in just a moment. Yeah, it's nice to see uh, the speakers come in and also just shout out to some of the familiar faces in here, uh, Portia and, and some others there. Um, it really is a jam-packed day of uh, Twitter spaces, so this will be, this will be a good one. Um, we've got, certainly got lots to discuss. Cal, what do you reckon? Should we start kicking things off and we can just like, as more people come in, we can just filter them into the conversation and and kind of get the ball ro rolling? Works for me. Juliana is going to be the only one that'll be showing up late to the party. We do. Oh, actually, I do see her now in the audience. So we have everybody here. So guys, uh, I'm Kale, the community manager here at Good Ghosting. I'm just mostly going to be running in a facilitating role. But thank you for joining us today for our Women's Day Twitter space. We will be following this by a pool launch on Cello directly after the conclusion of the call. If you do stick around and hang out the whole way with us, we will drop a link for a form that will let you claim a badge on Polygon. It's a lot like a POAP, but it is a, an ERC721 NFT on the Polygon blockchain. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm going to get out of the way sooner than later. But we wanted to start off with an idea of what is good ghosting, and the, kind of the best person to let us know that would be Rachel. But we do have another set of guest speakers here today. So we'll be joined by Beck from Clutch Wallet, Denise from the Valora app, Jessica from Impact Market, Juliana from Meta Gamma Delta, Maggie from Shifi, and Sarah from the Talent Protocol. And so, like I mentioned, I'm mostly going to stay out of the way today and just try to maintain the time clock so that way we're moving on schedule and respecting everyone's time today. We are aiming for one hour. With that in mind, I'm going to hush. Miss Rachel, do you want to go ahead and lead us for the day on what is good ghosting? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, like, yeah, um, thanks all the speakers for coming. Uh, one of the things that we're going to do is, like, go around and, and everyone's going to talk a little bit about what you know they're building, but it, it makes sense for me to kind of kick this off um, as the representative from from Good Ghosting here. So, if you've never heard of Good Ghosting before, we're basically a sort of DeFi saving protocol, De saving and others. Uh, we basically got a protocol that's going to incentivize you to do all of the good financial behavior that you want to do, but you don't always get round to, or you don't always feel incentivized to. So. Starting with savings, uh, I know from my own personal experience, I often set myself saving goals that I did not meet. Uh, come the end of the month, um, somehow I was running low on funds and I didn't save any that month. Uh, so we basically built a incentivized, gamified uh, saving app that they're basically saving for. So if you join them, they'll be set up with a predefined um, deposits that you may need to make over a fixed amount of time. As long as you make those deposits, you're going to get all sorts of rewards. The first uh, layer of rewards that we build in is just the interest. So we have gamified interest. So the interest only goes to uh, the kind of the people who had all their saving goals, as it were, the good savers. Um, that's the first layer. Uh, and we build in a fully, a fully like non-custodial way. So we build on top of um, Ave on Polygon and uh, Moolah on Cello. So the pool that we'll be launching after today will be a Moolah pool on Cello. Um, and yeah, on top of that, we thought, like, let's reward people with uh, NFTs. Um, we're also building out a kind of native good ghosting uh, score. And that's going to evolve a lot more as, as we build out the platform. Um, yeah, we just really want to help people kind of build up the good financial habits they did and hopefully, hopefully help people uh, grow their uh, portfolio. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's good ghosting. Uh, Kel, do you want me to talk a little bit about uh, sort of my background and how I got here? Because I know that was one of the questions we were going to do as we go around. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it sounds perfect. Okay. So just your journey into Web3 and, and then you kind of already let us know what you're up to in terms of building. But yeah, how did you end up here? Yeah, yeah, of course. So building good ghosting now. 
Uh, my journey into Web3 has kind of been through the development, developer relations route. So I, I was working as a developer for a number of years. Then I was going to lots of meetups and lots of conferences and events and wanted to become a, a developer evangelist, which was a pretty fun job title. So I did that for a number of uh, companies, both in the Web2 space and, and in the Web3 space as well. Um, and then from then, it sort of evolved. Um, Good Ghosting was like a hackathon project, so a very kind of uh, classic uh, crypto way to kind of form a company. Um, and I've been working on this full time for the last year, but been building it for the last year and a half. So that's really my journey into here. But I'm, I'm really passionate about um, just building tools that aren't just for... Um, so when, when I was coming up with the original idea of Good Ghosting, and I think we've seen this a lot in the DeFi space, there are a lot of uh, projects out there that are really well suited for people who have, let's just say, quite a considerable net worth and want to spend a lot of time into this. So like, you know, if you want to go and yield farm, you can get amazing returns. But, you know, it's, it's kind of set up for people who have, you know, all day to do that and have quite a considerable balance. Um, what I wanted to build with Good Ghosting was something that would, you know, be accessible for sort of the more everyday person who doesn't necessarily have like 10,000 to put in, um, doesn't need to be looking at it all day because we all have, you know, busy lives and, and stuff that's going on, um, but also would actually reward them and help them kind of uh, build up their portfolio and be a kind of nice, easy, hopefully more fun way into the space. So that's just a little bit about uh, me um, and kind of what I've been building. Kel, should I pass back over to you to, to, to bring on the other guests? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually have, uh, it's easiest for me to just go visually through who I already have set for speakers here. So Beck, if you don't mind, you're up next there. Beck's with Clutch Wallet. Uh, I got interesting questions for you. You're really active there on Twitter. You got some really um, interesting interviews that you line up with some individuals, but we'd like to know a little bit more about your background and just your journey into Web3 and what you're currently building over at Clutch. Cool. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So nice to be here. Rachel, lovely to hear your voice again. Um my journey into Web3, it started, uh, I guess the setting was the banking industry in Australia was my first introduction um, to crypto in 2017. I remember getting sat down um, by a, a colleague and they took me through Satoshi and what blockchain technology was. And I just remember feeling so unbelievably overwhelmed, but I had like four pages of notes after three hours of sitting down and hearing the backstory. And then I just kind of went a bit a bit crazy for a couple of months of just like every evening and afternoon and on my way to work I would be doing more and more research and trying to kind of get across as much as I could in a short period of time um, and that led me to basically want to leave leave the banking industry in 2019 to kind of start investing over that time period um, my kind of initial investments my first investment was actually into a women focused or, or led company called Power Ledger um, in 2018 and then I kind of made traditional investments into Bitcoin and Ethereum and, and kind of things kept moving from there and in 2019 I left the bank. Um, we were going through a Royal Commission so the, the backdrop I guess of what was coming out of the industry then and, and what crypto and kind of Web3 stood for was, was, was very attractive. Um, the last kind of three years I've spent in CMO roles across two different uh, crypto projects. One was a social media app called Vid and the other one was an anonymous uh, DeFi trading protocol. Um, and that, that really led me to, to kind of halfway through last year and um, looking at myself and I guess the time I'd spent in the industry and thinking I'd really like to start building something and kind of asking myself, what is it that I'm really passionate about? And um and, and kind of what's something that's going to get me out of bed every day. And, and that was really looking at the participation of women at the time. I think there was this like moment I had last year when the NFT boom was kind of really starting to kick off. And I remember wanting to purchase an NFT um, to kind of update my, my, my Twitter profile. And I couldn't see something that looked like me. This was pre world of women, pre any of the incredible PFPs and, and just projects that we've started to see launching as more women have entered the space. But I just remember thinking like, damn, I can't even see something that represents myself that I, I would want. Um, and that's such a representation of the makeup of this industry at the moment. And so um, that kind of led me into wanting to build a product and, and start thinking about what a product would look like that would actually onboard women. And so 
Um, the wallet was one of those first products that is often downloaded as a kind of first time user experience. And um, the kind of group of us that got together to start building Clutch really thought there was an opportunity to innovate on that first time user experience that didn't just facilitate investments, but allowed for education and for community to develop within the wallet experience. Um, so that's a little bit about how I got into Web3 and in terms of what we're building, Clutch is a new next generation wallet ecosystem that is being marketed towards women. Um, it's a decentralized kind of DeFi app. So um, non-custodial uh, access to your investments. Um, and we're still early days. We're kind of in our first six months of building. We've just closed our first funding round. So um, still in that discovery process, but, but really excited to kind of be here and, and thank you. Absolutely, Beck. That's fantastic. I appreciate it. I do want to give you a shout out too. You're the only um, PFP right now on this Twitter space that's uh, hexagon shaped. So you're <laughs> thank you. Truly repping, the, <laughs> repping it, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And so just moving through the list here, Jessica, if you're there, this is Jessica with Impact Market. And uh, we'd like to go ahead and give her an opportunity to explain her journey into Web3 and what she's up to over there. Uh, yeah, sure. So hi, everyone. Uh, yeah. Thanks for, for having me. W really cool to be here today. Um, so my journey into Web3, so just for perspective, um, my, my background is in social sciences and, and human rights. So I previously essentially worked in the not-for-profit sector, uh, you know, looking at ways to implement programs that could support uh, sustainable development goals in developing countries such as, you know, gender equality, poverty alleviation, and um, all those questions. So I, I have always looked at kind of ways that could improve the work the development sector is doing, especially uh, through the use of technology. But essentially, I was, I was really interested on, on how we could right now change the narrative and actually put power in the end of the community that are actually actually receiving aids or program rather than just you know um few individual working within the organization decided uh, for those people so that that's where my first interest into web3 blockchain uh come from but but still then it was really actually very hard to find use cases where web3 was used for social impact uh until i actually came across uh impact market and uh, met one of the founder, uh, which is Marco. So obviously impact market has been my first step into Web3 and it has been quite exciting uh, since then, I would say. I I'm still learning a lot, having a lot to learn, but have been uh, a first step into, you know, this mix of social impact uh, into, into Web3. Uh, in regards to what we're building, so um, Impact Market is a decentralized poverty alleviation protocol that um, distributes unconditional basic income to vulnerable community all over the world. So as of right now, we're supporting more than 30,000 individuals, 60% uh, of them are actually women in, in 30 countries. So the goal is really to create financial independence within this vulnerable community, but also to provide easy access uh, to financial services to actually people uh, who need it the most. That, that is a complex topic in a very simplistic explanation. And so well delivered there, Jessica. Um, you have one of the most interesting opportunities displaying the actual use case of, of how crypto can be applied to real world problems. And so amazing to see what Impact Mark doing there. You guys are the darling of the CELO ecosystem right now. Uh, let's get Juliana up here. If you have a moment, Ms. Juliana, this is Meta Gamma Delta background here, but what was your journey into Web3 and what are you up to here lately? Hey, super nice to represent Meta Gamma Delta. You guys from Good Ghosting are with us since our like first grantee program. Metagama Delta has this mission of like empowering women, empowering everybody in the Web3 space to like lose the fear to use dApps for the first time, interact with their wallets, vote on chain. We all face like high gas prices. We had to migrate to other layers. So we're in this journey together. 
And uh, my personal story, I didn't start as a developer or someone that like could easily like deploy smart contracts and put everything on chain. Uh, I come from a financial background, like 15 years in finance. I traded derivatives in Wall Street. I am Brazilian, uh, so my country faced many speculative shocks. So yes, if you consider like inflation, for some people inflation is going to Starbucks and, and paying like a little bit more for your caramel latte. For others, it's like your purchasing power is like goes to the like sink in, in a matter of days. So certain countries really face like a history of inflation and that teaches us the hard way how to save. So when I was like eight years old, I saw like my mom going to the supermarket and buying like 12 cans of olive oil. And that was not unusual. So to me, it's like when you're eight years old, you think it's okay. But and then I realized that's not all right when your family has to buy like so much olive oil. So certain countries do have this wealth gap and inflation helps this this gap to increase. But um, for International Women's Day, we also have like this big gap between men and women. How much do men earn and how much they save and how rich they get versus the capacity of women to save and to invest. So I think like we are on a mission to help women not just like be incentivized to spend their credit cards and go to the Sephora's of the world and, and buy unnecessary things, but also to start saving. And saving means a lot of times taking risks. So uh, yes, I think like in the DeFi space, it is risk taking, it is a lot of uncertainty, smart contract uncertainty. Is this protocol going to be there tomorrow? Am I going to be rug pulled? So there's so much education we, we need to do together as a community. And uh, so Metagama Delta is this DAO that we can, we make friends and, and we talk about like what's going on. We have friends from MakerDAO, Ave, Good Ghosting, and, and so many other ladies with, with different backgrounds, with learning. And we're in an environment that it's super cool to have like more women participating in the discussions and not being shy to ask questions that sometimes can be like intimidating when you join a, a panel full of men. So today I was part of, uh, I was invited to be an angel investor of a DAO called Own.Fund. A lot of the metaverse and uh, NFT space that we're always empowering uh, new artists to be part of that. But I, I also got invited by New Order DAO to take the role as project manager. I'm running a program now called uh, DGen in Residence. So um, you guys are very welcome to get familiar with that. We're looking for D5 founders and um, pretty much to, to help founders to find their way in the DeFi space. It's a, it's a very complex and integrated and composable env environment. So, uh, yeah, my role is, is to be in this uh, mission of, of inviting more of the brilliant minds behind Web3 to, to take part and actively lead this ecosystem forward. And um, super thanks for good ghosting, you guys. Uh, what you're building and, and uh, this gamified way to help people like meet their goals and save even more. That's honorable. That's uh, I really appreciate uh, the the idea behind the project, and um, hope to grow the 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 usability of good ghosting ahead. Awesome, thank you. I also just want to just jump in there just to say, you know, thank you for being like one of the earliest supporters of Good Ghosting. Um, we got a grant from Meta Gamma Delta before we'd done any fundraising, um, and it was just really helpful. Like, help us fund the company, like set up the company some operational stuff that we had to do um, and it's just been a community to be part of as well. So yeah, just, a, just a shout out there. Yeah, shout out to everybody that makes Meta Gamma Delta reality. It's so hard like when you have a DAO and you have to explain what the DAO is and people are skeptical. Is she a scammer? Does she want my money? And uh, we needed to make something so inclusive that most women didn't even have like die to join the DAO. 
So we did like, it's the only DAO that's 100% democratic. Everybody has the same voting power. It takes only 10 die to become a member. And the meetings are amazing. So I invite everybody here, uh, if you are not participating in a DeFi ecosystem full of women, I think Metagama Delta is such a great start. And yes, we want to empower projects like uh, Rachel's Good Ghosting and, and Jill and, and all the team. So it's a pleasure for us to, to have uh, this these partnerships and, and, and give grants to those that deserve. Fantastic, Juliana. Well, well said and well presented. Thank you very much for being here today. Uh, I remember myself vividly, and I tell people often about how uh, embarrassed I felt to finally like open up my mouth and ask somebody in DeFi, what is a wallet? Uh, what is this MetaMask thing I keep hearing about? And so breaking down that, that entry barriers is so critically important. And so let's move on here to Sarah. Sarah is with the Talent Protocol. She's the communications and marketing lead over there right now. We've been going back and forth on turning on her mic. So let's see how this goes for her. Hey, sorry for the technical issues. Actually, the, I'm not leading marketing. Uh, it's Philippe Massé who's listening. I'm leading content. Uh, but um, thank you for, for this opportunity um, to present myself. Um, I wanted to share uh, actually a couple of thoughts with you guys. One is that I went to, my background is marketing and comms, and um, some at some point in time, I got fed up with the corporate structures, the difficulty that is to give feedback, how, how you have to deal with so many egos and so I found myself in a, in a point in time where I wanted something new but I didn't know what it was exactly. Um, it, this was by the time that the yeah, pandemic break I, I was off for uh, f um, the professional for a professional period. I became a mother so I was kind of lost of what I wanted to do next. But I knew that I wanted to do something uh, that had to do with tech because that was my experience, my best experience were in tech. And basically I started to I just, this is amazing how representation works because there's one day that I saw my previous boss, which is a badass girl. She became a marketing lead at an amazing crypto project. And then just clicked me that my husband has a blockchain company he, we've been dealing with crypto for so long and I never even pictured myself as someone who could be working in crypto. So this is amazing how rep I didn't even know that representation would be such a huge thing for me until it became actually so important. So a year ago, I decided that I wanted to learn more about crypto and more about blockchain. I was always a people's person. I always wanted to tell stories, to communicate, and so you can imagine how repellent it could be for me to talk about smart contracts and money and tokens. But then I realized that I could bring value to these projects and this world by doing what I did best, which was telling the stories, build the narratives, and reach out to audiences. So that's what I started doing, and I'm lucky enough to be um, in Lisbon, Portugal, which has become one of the centers of Web3. There's a lot of amazing and cool projects, so I already started to reach out to them and just asking them what were their uh, difficulties in communicating, and I understood that I wasn't alone in this in this feeling that. Web3 is really hard to get to grasp that it, you can get a sense of almost like a tribe that is talking about this and you not they, they are not letting anyone else in so i understood that was there was a lot of work to be done in this area and just to make things easier to understand just communicate in a more simple matter a simple way uh, how what are the advantages of Web3, of crypto, of DeFi, of social tokens? And so I saw myself just being inspired by these projects, being able to 
work alongside them and then you stumble upon DAOs which is an amazing I believe that will be like will shape the future of work so that was something that I was looking for because I, I didn't want a nine-to-five job since I've become a mother I was I'm really conscious about how limited my time is so I wanted to make sure that I was working in the things that I loved for the time that I wanted and in the projects that actually I could be of value so Web3 and crypto just was a really game changer for myself in just a year a year it was and it still is an amazing experience and then yeah I just love the vibe <laughs> it's Sarah you're speaking right to my heart I'm in the same boat as you as I I thought at one point I was going to have to learn how to, you know, write smart contracts or read smart contracts if I was going to become relevant in the space and, and then realize that this talking to everyone all the time about this amazing technology is a skill in and of itself. Thank you for sharing that. No worries. And a shout out to everybody in, uh, in Lisbon. I think there are at least like four or five of us <laughs> in the call. So, yeah, it's a, the best a great place, place to be. To be. <laughs> Yeah, my, my two-year-old agrees, so yeah, let's continue. <laughs> Jessica, I think you have your hand up there. Feel free to go ahead. No, I apologize. Just wanted to, to raise my hand. I'm in Lisbon, too. So yeah, we are all cool here. <laughs> That's it. And it seems like the place to be. So I, I do know that we have Denise here as well from Delora Wallet. I've been trying to get her out as a speaker. We may be having tech issues, so I'll, I'll keep trying with her as well. But Miss Maggie, you've been so patient and you have been busy on that emoji button. So I appreciate your active participation. Please take the floor. Let us know how you got into Web3 and what you're building over at SheetBuy. Yes, um, Hype Woman is a service over here. I'm a big fan of emojis. Um, also just shout out to Metagamma Delta. They actually funded uh, the women in Oxford Business School to come have Shifi um, in me teach. So that's awesome, really important work. Um, and then good ghosting. Rachel has presented to our community and we'll definitely have you guys come again. Um, and so really excited this year, <clears throat> really trying to get more partnerships under the belt and awesome to be speaking next to all of these inspiring women. So my journey starts in 2016. I was at IBM Watson in a corporate strategy meeting in Astor Place, New York. And it's really a story about curiosity. This one executive kept talking about blockchain, blockchain, blockchain. He was on the phone and some other executives were like, let's mute him. And I was like, wow, he seems super passionate about this. What's blockchain? So I did the old school thing and went into a Barnes and Noble, which is a physical bookstore. Uh, looked for any book called blockchain, found one called the blockchain revolution. And it was truly, you know, I, you would say I was in it for the tech. It was about cross-border remittances, uh, decentralized identity, um, supply chain, uh, financial markets trading. And I was like, wow, this seems amazing. Like I could do tech for good. Like I don't have to do Watson back, back in banking processes. Um, and just got, uh, tried working on some stuff at IBM, built out some financial market strategy, red tape, blah, blah, blah. Wouldn't let me move too good of an employee. And said I could would have to wait like three years to join the blockchain unit. And I was like, I think it's happening now. So just did all the Googling, um, finally found a second degree connection who's working at Consensus in 2017, like uh, winter of 2017. Uh, he met me for a coffee after I asked for an introduction, went up to the Consensus office. It was a flat in Bushwick, Brooklyn, totally different than um, IBM Watson and just had to do it. And I, and I will say um, I joined at the time where Joe Lubin, who's one of the co-founders of Ethereum, was still interviewing people. And when he gave me my job offer, like something shifted within me and I, and I knew it was going to change my life. And it, and it definitely did. Um, I was sort of, you know, I was living in New York city or surrounded by wall street people just felt like I was gate kept out of a lot of conversations about finance. Cause I didn't join this club um, after school. And so when I found about Ethereum and like, I could just invest and even my VC friends were like, Hey, that's, that's really not fair. I'm, I'm jealous or whatever. I was like, this is incredible. Like I can invest and then I can work with people actually trying to build on this technology, right? So I can make a wise choice and, and be a part of building it up too. So um, that really inspired me. Um, I co-founded my day job in 2018. It's called Web3 Cloud. In 2019, DeFi really took off, right? So kind of this wanting to open financial services, you know, break down the barriers of, of banking and Wall Street started happening. And I just noticed a lot of women at Consensus weren't participating. Um, a lot of the guys were immediately put onto DeFi projects. Women were still in legal or PM roles or ops. And for some reason, we just had a harder time 
getting into those roles. I had done a bunch of policy work, wasn't moving in the needle on all the calls about how do we, you know, hire more women, do more of this. And I was like, you know what, what if I just teach women DeFi um, and, and crypto? Like, what if I just make women the best candidates ever to have these roles and not rely on anybody else to tell me how to do it, when to do it, when it can be done? So um, was running in 2019, listening to some music, meditating on it thought of the name Shifi. Once again, it was one of those moments where I was like, I guess I have to do it. The name's too good. Um, <clears throat> started my pilot cohort with In Consensus, the women's community. Um, actually, a friend, Liz, sent me the very first note I sent in Slack. Launched it in April 2020. Let the people, let the world know I was doing it. Um, ran my first cohort publicly in October of 2020. That was about 20 women. I uh, just onboarded my fifth cohort last week, which is 200 women. So they go through 12 weeks of... Um, crypto masterclass uh, with a big focus on education and then experimenting, like using all these protocols, getting comfortable, navigating around, bridging your tokens, swapping on Uniswap, you know, lending into pools, um, the lingo, all that stuff. Um, and then after they do the cohort, they can contrib contribute to the community. We have job boards, just really passionate about understanding things, sharing them. I feel like crypto has changed my life way beyond, you know, it's not even the financial stuff. It's the people, it's the ideas. And now I have this like incredible community of women that I'm constantly inspired by and grateful that they decided to join a Shifi community and take this journey. And really we're hoping to unlock financial freedom. And the, the, the saying or core narrative behind Shifi is financial freedom is feminine. So um, that's what I am all about. And just once again, really um, happy to be here and I'm hoping a lot of you in the call today um, listen to your own curiosities after um, listening to us. Yeah, amazing. Like Maggie, like having been on the Shifi call, I just say like, what great work bringing such an amazing cohort of, of women into the space um, from all different walks of life, all different areas of expertise and skilling them up to kind of, uh, you know, be the next leaders in, in this industry. And I think it's fantastic. That's just, that's good. There. So let's just go ahead and move on. We do have the opportunity for Denise. She has connected as a speaker. So Denise is with the Valora app. And if you're available, let's hear what you're up to and how you got into Web3. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, it's it's great to be here. Um, I've known Rachel since uh, fellow camp days. Uh, so now a couple of months ago, maybe a year, I think. Um, so my journey into Web3 started in um, 2016. I... Um, was doing consulting assignment for an early crypto wallet, mobile crypto wallet called Abra. They're still around. They're multi, uh, multi chain, multi token wallet, um, kind of the OG, one of the OG wallets. And um, I was consulting to focus on how um, Abra could leverage crypto. And at that point, it was it was Bitcoin. So this was early on to do international remittances and to really like take a slice of the international remittance market dominated for, by um the big players we're all familiar with like western union etc um and back then obviously the economics of, of doing remittances with bitcoin were not quite there um but it was a, a space that just fascinated me as someone that um had I, i've lived and, and worked in about eight countries around the world including places in latin america where i'm from um but also in africa europe and, and now in, in north america um and seeing how financial services differed everywhere and how people relied on they on, on them for to different extents. And so it was really that um, idea of like how we can use uh, the power of, of crypto to improve the lives of people, the financial lives of people in emerging markets that really drew me in into the space. Um, fast forward a couple of years, I joined the, the Salt Project pre mainnet in 20, early 2019, so three years ago, uh, to focus again on that uh, end user experience in emerging markets. Um, bringing in a lot of insights from from working in the field, doing a lot of user research, and, and talking to potential users of of blockchain products that uh, were built for emerging markets to understand what were the the things that they needed and how how easy or difficult it was for them to to understand products um, that are Web three native. And uh, yeah, and, and it was really that work so early on in, in Salo's journey that um, kind of like sealed the deal for me, talking to people in Mexico and Sierra Leone, especially women who are often the, the ones that manages, manage a household uh, household's finances and how they 
um, saw their um, access or lack of access to financial services as a as a um, kind of constraint. And um, yeah, with that in mind, I, I just kept on, on working on this. And now I work at, at Valora. Valora is a, a mobile first or mobile crypto wallet native to Solo ecosystem, uh, to Solo blockchain platform. And it's really focused on, on bringing in people in all around the world in my, in my personal interests in emerging markets, but we have users in, in all markets um, into Web3. And so that is solving for that early use case of, of remittances that is um, that the, the livelihoods of many people in emerging markets depend on, but also Web3 more broadly, uh, bringing the financial opportunities that, that have um, surfaced through for us that are like kind of Web3 natives and feel really comfortable going into yield farming and all these different things and uh, making them uh, simpler for users in emerging markets with no banking access or with uh, lower financial levels, uh, sorry, levels of financial literacy to understand and really leverage. And so today I, I, I work on, on Valora to really launch this product and, and grow this product so that everybody um, around the world, especially women, um, can access Web3 in a very simple way that works for them. That's fantastic, Denise. We have an agenda in mind for you. We're very happy to see the Valora app on Celo and just what you're building out over there to see ourselves as a DAP on that DAP exploration category. It's always nice to see. And so congratulations on the product work there. Um, that's a great introduction and overview from all of our guest speakers there. The one thing that's just too precious in Web3 is time itself, right? We're already halfway past the hour and it's going to go quicker than I even imagined. And so just a couple of open open air discussion topics. Rachel, we'll kind of toss this one to you and then we'll let you kind of discuss. I was just going to say, Kyle, like, sorry to cut you off there, but I'm wondering yeah. if just, I know we have a few people in our Discord um, asking about the code for the NFT. Maybe we could just drop that in right now and then we can like dive into the, uh, dive into the open-ended questions without any uh, questions about the NFT code. Yeah, that get, yeah, that's a good idea. It gives us a little bit of time for people that have the issues with it. So the code's easy. It's not case sensitive. It's not specific. You won't get it wrong. They're just manually checked. But it's IWD 2022. And so just International Women's Day 2022. Any way, shape, or form, IWD 2022. And that will be the secret badge phrase in the form that will have our survey in it at the conclusion of the call. I think that's already out for folks to be able to complete Cool. Awesome. And we'll share that again at the end. Uh, cheers. Okay, cool. Uh, with that, I'll pass back over to Kale for the, uh, the open questions that we were going to just open up to all of our speakers here. Yeah, absolutely. And so I'm going to kind of roll, roll two into one here for the beginning, just because time is precious, right? And so what are the advances that Web3 offers over traditional finance? And how does that help advance women's finances specifically? I'm happy to jump in here and, and talk a little bit about uh, what I think. Um, feel free for anyone to to grab the mic off me. Um, I think there's like I think we are in a space where one of the exciting things about uh, Web three or like maybe even to bring it to like DeFi specifically, like it is still very um, much earlier on in the industry's growth. So it's actually the opportunity is is much bigger. Um, of course, that does come with some level of risks, and anyone who's been looking at the market over the last a couple of weeks will know will know what that means. Um, but in terms of, there's a huge like I believe there's like a once in a generation uh, chance to grow wealth here. Um, so I think that's a major thing. Um, I think we're also building out systems that are fundamentally much more transparent and open, and I think that is of huge benefit. Like for example, with good ghosting. Um, we're able to just like build on top of Moolah or on top of Aave. Of course, like we know both of those protocols, so it's, it's not an issue that, you know, we have good relationship with them, but you don't even need that. You could just like go to the smart contract and start building on it. So we're actually getting, um, we're going to start seeing like more and more innovative um, protocols. I think good ghosting is an example of that, but you know, in, you know, in the future, we're going to see things built on top of good ghosting and we're going to see like this evolve in ways that is going to be quite fascinating to, to watch. Um, and yeah, and I think transparency is like really important. I actually put out a tweet earlier this morning saying, since I've joined this space, um, you know, in some ways, everything being on an open uh, ledger does bring like, you know, maybe some, you know, 
privacy concerns or like maybe it does push the the conversation around uh you know money front and center um and i think for people who have been kind of historically cut out of like wealth generation i think that's actually very powerful um because i think as women we're often or at least you know from my experience like wasn't really brought up with much financial advice or even um, taught to think about money in a way. I didn't really know like what was a normal salary range or what I could even go for or like had no idea really about like growing like a personal portfolio or net worth or anything like this. And I think being in this space, it does kind of force a conversation about that. And I think that is really empower empowering for people who have been cut out of it. Um, yeah, so that's just my two cents. I'm happy to to open up to any of other speakers here as well. Rachel, um, uh, actually, I'm not an expert on on DeFi, as you might understood, but I actually it really it just spe really speaks dear to my heart your experience because I believe that I always been like I always had opportunity in my life, but I wasn't educated to know about finance I don't it wasn't something that really wasn't I thought it wasn't even on my reach you know and the idea that in web3 and DeFi you can start experimenting testing it out you don't have to have a lot of money you don't have to knock on the door of someone with a suit of a man in the suits actually I think just that really breaks a lot of barriers, just that little first step. That's my experience. Thank you for sharing. And I'll pass over to Jessica. I can see you've got your, your hand up there. Hi, thanks, Rachel. Uh, yeah, I actually want to talk in terms of, you know, the difference uh, between Web3 to uh, traditional finance um, regarding women. I, I kind of want to talk of or experience that impact market and especially, you know, women uh, that coming from vulnerable population because those women are actually often blocked, you know, from traditional finance, financial services because of, well, either uh, issue on earning income in, in informal sector, uh, lack of identification or insufficient collateral and on and on. Uh, there is also, as Sarah said, uh, a huge limited financial literacy. So I think Web3, it kind of creates, you know, which create new identities, it, it bridge the gap and actually make financial services available to women and community wherever they are. Uh, they, it, it actually provide real ownership to women by empowering financial independence regarding other situation or what if they receive an income or not right and and for women and especially in those kind of uh, community it means you know ownership which means new level of agency it means having actually the power to make their own decision which is extremely important um, I think there is many women um, that see web3 as the way to kind of bypass um, more restrictive traditional system that, that can actually enable them to gain either greater access and control over uh, financial opportunities for themselves, for their business, for their family, for their children. Um, I'm, I'm when talking about that, I'm actually more thinking about uh, economic freedom that, you know, due to local norm in, in certain country, we know that a lot of women have difficulties uh, accessing traditional uh, finances. And so Web3 actually give them the ability to generate access and use income without, you know, the need to just uh, check with their husband, right? Which is something that we too often forget, but this is a huge advantage of Web3, I, I do believe. No, definitely. Like, and I think, you know, when you actually combine that with um, in other, like, in other countries where there are different social norms, it's very impactful. I can see Beck's got a, her hand up, but I'm also just going to pass over to Juliana first because I saw that she had a hand up, and then we can pass over to Beck if that's if that's cool with everyone. Absolutely, like in three bullet points, like super great advantages of Web three. I would say number one, anybody can open like an account on a Sunday afternoon or a national holiday and just start getting engaged with the crypto space right away. 
That's a huge advantage over opening any bank account somewhere else. Talking about bank accounts, when you need a loan, you need to apply for credit and fill up forms. Who needs that when you go to Compound or Ave? You can just deposit collateral, get your loan like in the next block. You wait 15 seconds, depends on how much gas you push in the system, but you get your loan based on the value of your collateral right away. No bullshit. And the third, and I think that's the very, like, the, the, the women use very few, but guys do that a lot, which is quite cool, the fact that everybody can see other people's wallets. EtherScan is an amazing source of inspiration of other people's portfolios. Whether it's about their NFT collections, and some people have so many super cool NFTs, to what tokens are they actually farming? What is it that they're doing? And are they changing their portfolio allocation? You cannot do that in a bank account. If I want to know, I don't know, Jeff Bezos' bank account, what is it that he has? I have no idea. But I can absolutely follow Vitalik.eth and see, like, what is Vitalik doing? So I think this is a huge advantage of transparency, permissionless, and that's my take. The three bullet points of uh, advantages of Web3. 100% agree on the old ether scan snooping. It is a very valuable empowerment tool. Marina, I can see that you've got your hand up. I'll pass over to Beck and then we'll bring you on as a speaker. Thanks, Rachel. I just wanted to add in as well that I guess when I think about Web3, a unique component of it that is different from traditional finance and, and possibly Web2 is the community aspect that comes alongside of this experience, which is jumping into a Discord group, a Facebook group, a, you know, on a, on a, on a call um, on Zoom with a, with a group of other people that are interested in asking questions and that you develop relationships with. And it's, it's such a bizarre thing to think that, um, you know, in, in the investing experience and the interaction in this world has, has led to such an incredible kind of camaraderie between people that kind of come together around different topics or different types of investment strategies or be because of different groups they're wanting to invest with. But I think that community aspect is something that makes it really unique and is also something that strengthens it because you have that ability to fall back and ask questions and feel supported and, and get educated. Um, so I think that is another really unique aspect of, of Web3 and how it can kind of continue to push our financial access and growth. Definitely. You don't have to go alone. It's a really nice thing. Um, and I'm going to invite Marina. Um, Marina is, uh, I've, I've been following Marina for a while on um, Twitter, but maybe Marina, if you just want to give a quick intro for, of yourself for the rest of the, the group and then uh, pass on your words of wisdom. <laughs> sure. Um, nice to meet you all. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this opportunity. And I think I wanted to go back to the conversation of, you know, finance wasn't something that I was taught that I was told that this was for me. And in fact, I'm actually married to a PhD in finance. Uh, but then I learned about Bitcoin in 2014. And I remember saying, that's magic internet money, right? And that's not really for me. But when I finally understood the technology, what is blockchain, the transparency, immutability, and all these other factors as a public policy person, I finally, finally got it. And now I can tell my husband, guess what? I have a PhD in crypto. <laughs> and I think it's really powerful to give yourself that permission to learn, to do it, to change. And I've had the most amazing mentors that are in this group, uh, Juliana and Maggie and, and Rebecca and a bunch of you guys. I even have the Valor app. I'm in Shifai. I'm in Meta Gamma Delta. You know, I've been part of this community for a very long time and I love being feeling uh, included and inclusive. And uh, I think, as you know, also, I wrote a report on women that use crypto around the world where we interviewed 60 women from 32 countries because this is a global revolution. And in fact, 36% or more specifically said that they joined this revolution for the technology. And 80% want to get paid in crypto. So there's really interesting facts and figures related to this idea of financial independence. And I appreciate uh, being here and having this space to share this in a day like today. Amazing. And uh, thank you for popping up as, as a bonus speaker. It's, it's great to have you here. Um, Kel, I know we had a few more questions 
uh, typed in, but I'm thinking maybe just as you mentioned, time is super tight, but to get one more in, I'm going to bundle two together. Um, one, which is like, what are some of the kind of challenges we have in the space, like onboarding uh, more women and also like other, other represent other underrepresented groups into the space. And then also like, where do we want to see the space in like five or 10 years into the future? Um, so I'll open those two questions up. Um, anyone wants to jump in, put your hand up or just grab the mic. Yes, I'll, I'll try to go quickly so more people um, have a chance to, to share. But, you know, challenges that I've noticed uh, since I've been onboarding women for a couple years now, and, and even I catch myself doing it, it's like layer one, mainnet, layer two, hot storage, online wallet, web browser, right? We have so many words for similar things cryptocurrencies versus tokens well they're kind of the same but you know they're different so i think a lot of that seeing the language and seeing it again and taking the time to explain acronyms you know somebody asked what's you know what's fud and allow list right so as much as it's like a permissionless ecosystem anybody can jump in download their wallet um a lot of these like little language like we're learning new finance and if we didn't have old finance we have to bridge that and we're learning new tech and we're learning all the words that um, we love engineers but a lot of like engineering males had come up with to define all these terms right so you know making that more accessible and then you know kind of what we might take for granted which is like you know private key seed phrase like all of these things and really the risks associated with them we might think like we've been around for a minute so we get it but really just hand like uh i those points i make over again and again in my in my presentations just to make sure that people have the language and the information they need and in five to ten years i want to see you know a world where we're at like total funding parity uh see so many more women leaders and ceos and no more reports that 90 percent of the met people using DeFi are you know males between the ages of 20 20 and 30 so that's what we're really trying to do here, right? All of us is empowering women to take that step, to take those risks, to start investing, to build those products, products for us as well, right? Um, so that's what I'm really, really hoping to see. 100% with you there. Um, Denise, I'm going to pass over to you because you've got your, your hand up. Thanks. Yeah, I just wanted to um, add to, to something that both Marina and Maggie mentioned. Um, women traditionally often feel like, oh, finance is not for me as a career path or, or finance is very male dominated. And that's also true in Web3. And so I think for us to, to, to help more women get into space, we have to make Web3 feel more like, yes, it's for me, it's for you, it's for everyone. And that starts if you're hiring with more inclusive job descriptions, right? If you're sourcing candidates with just making a, a very conscious and intentious effort to source women from uh, maybe spaces beyond tech that they may have expertise in, in other uh, or have built skill sets in other industries and we can help them like realize that Web3 is also for them as a career path. And once they do join, just making sure that, as Maggie mentioned, they are guided, they have the support and the learning resources that they need so they can be successful from day one. And they, most important, that they can feel successful from day one. And so just making everything more uh, women inclusive is, is kind of like what I wanted to just highlight. Definitely, definitely. I'm going to pass over to Sarah because I can see you've also got your, your hand up there. Hey, um, I actually wanted to share an, a thought that has to do with, uh, for some reason, dear, finance and engineering is male dominated. And I have, uh, I don't think we could understand why in a, a simple conversation. So that is why um, it's normal that Web3 and crypto is so male dominated, right? Because it was built by economists and financial people and engineers. So that's almost like a step one. So the, by, by giving the idea that Web3 is built by men, it's normal that the products resonate more to men because they are building things that they are seeing they, they want for themselves and that's okay so i think that once we start slowly onboarding more people 
coming from different backgrounds, different genders, different uh, origins, like geographic origins, things will definitely necessarily change um, towards uh, opening up the spectrum. The, the other idea is that we have to be aware that there is a risk of trying to force that into with good intentions of building of bringing more women more diversity into the space but there's a risk of forcing that and with all the bad things that could happen it could be like projects can be seen as um piggybacking this this norm this this narrative or the idea that you're bringing people in that are not as um that could be not as relevant or skillful as they could be just because they are fulfilling some kind of um, diversity uh, uh, checkbox. So this is a really, really sensitive topic for me as a woman and someone who's not coming from engineer uh, engineering or financial worlds. The other thing that I wanted to share is that there is a social cost to join is such a specific sector as is web three for we want to be part of a we are all parts of social groups right like every girl or most women have a group of girlfriends once you go down the rabbit hole like it really becomes a huge part of your life because it's not just a job it's a lifestyle and it's it's something that is shaping the the reality onwards so you have a social cost. You go to have dinner with your girlfriends and you go to to places that you usually go and your conversation topics suddenly are not the same. And this is something that is a reality. I don't even know how to, how can we solve that? And I would love to know if there's anyone and the other women who are feeling, who have felt the same. But I feel that this is something that, these are specific points that can be solved overnight you know and that are sensitive topics and that with the idea and good intentions we can actually just try just keep things further for women you know um yeah so i wanted to share that sorry no thank you i saw beck's hand jumped up so i'm gonna pass over to beck so i believe maybe you have something to to add to that yeah sure absolutely this is a topic that i'm super passionate about um and I think there's there's something to be said for days like this, which is so wonderful because they bring about these conversations. Um, but I also think that we have, as a as a as a newly building industry, an opportunity to to flip the script on how this industry is made up and 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 who's kind of involved in it. And so, kind of from the start, actually having these conversations and and raising these topics on a daily basis. And so, you know, that might mean for projects like who what is the makeup of our investors what, what what is the fund makeup and and of those funds who are in those teams and and what do they look like um who's making up our teams and what is the diversity within our teams how are we marketing to our customers and what does that what does that visually look like what does the language look like that we're using um if we're at events who are the speakers and the panelists and if it's you know challenging to to find someone in certain areas kind of doing the difficult work to find um, more people so that there is representation because the stories that you do hear from women is like, you know, I went to this event or I was listening in on this talk and there was this one woman and she was the reason that like, I thought, Oh, that's someone that looks like me that, that inspires me to kind of um, feel like I can be here and I can do something in this industry. So I think there are a couple of different kind of questions we can constantly be asking ourselves to change our behaviors every day to support this this kind of um, development of diversity. Yeah, no, it's a really good point. Like, I guess like the kind of old cliches, you can't really be what you can't see. I kind of I think, think this, this year has been quite an interesting one, um, particularly with like the rise of NFTs. And I, I do feel maybe it has brought more women into the fold um, than before the sort of NFT, uh, I don't know what to call it, NFT mania or whatever, NFT year we had. So I think that's definitely been a, a positive thing. I mean, it's definitely not all of the work's done and it's just like a little bit of the work, but it has been amazing to see uh, like more representation, like you mentioned back at the beginning, seeing when we start to see a profile pic uh, NFT collections that actually had women in it, that was like amazing to begin with. 
Um, totally. Definitely having more visibility is, is really important. I'm going to hand over to Juliana because I also saw that you had your hand up um, on this point as well. Yeah, I would like to emphasize something super hard to understand, but it's hardware wallets is a must. Ladies, I cannot emphasize that like protecting your wallet is now a reality. It's not time for us to just do hot wallets anymore. Crypto has evolved. The amount of money tripled in size and so the hacks. Um, I was impersonated. So many friends got impersonated. And I would like to share the story, very unfortunate, of a friend, Jennifer. She lost $16,000 because she thought someone was like from a project and DM'd her and sent her a link where she could fix by typing her private keys. Never, ever, ever type your private keys anywhere. This is not cool. This is not something that we should be even saying that, but I couldn't emphasize more. Protect your wallets, add an extra layer. Everybody can get a Trezor, a Ledger or something else. They work super well with MetaMask. And also like super thanks for the five, six new followers. I have like 10 followers on Twitter. You guys just double the size. So if I said, if I said something that was, Nice to you. I'd like to just to thank the opportunity. But yes, let's protect our money as well in terms of hardware security. It's not just about investing and aping into projects, but also protecting our wealth in um, hardware is super important. Very wise words there indeed. Um, I know that we're kind of on the hour now and then everyone is uh, very time sensitive. So I just want to say a massive thank you for everyone who's uh, shared their, you know, their stories and their experience in the space. It's it's really uh, valuable and and actually really nice to have like a whole panel of of women and um, on a Twitter space today. So it's been amazing. Um, yeah, big thanks to everyone. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass over just at the end, uh, just to Kel because he's got a little bit of info. We are actually launching a special Women's Day pool on on Cello, um, which is deploying any moment now it may actually already be uh, deployed already um but kale's going to just give us a little bit of a lowdown on that and give us a reminder of the uh, the code for the nft form as well but yeah big big round of applause to all the guests and and thank you for your time it's fantastic guys this is this is definitely a space that we don't want to pull the plug on this is a conversation that can continue to roll out but we all have duties don't we so our new savings pool will be launching on Celo. It's probably deployed right now. Francis has been working quietly in the background. And so this is going to be a dual pool. And so there'll be two opportunities. You can choose to deposit in CUSD or also in Celo. We have details linking to the to the full pool details of the prizes and the raffles. Do want to give a shout out. We do have two NFT sponsors for that pool. One of them's been sitting here on the whole call. Uh, we were thinking of that she might be available to speak on today's call too, but she's had last minute changes. But this is Lisa. Uh, from the Chinchilla Gang NFT project over on Cello. It's one of my favorites. It's visually cute and a very good community. It's being built over there. And then we we're also sponsored by the Women of Cello NFT project. And so that's a very similar uh, project that you've seen in terms of women PFPs. And that's the only one operating on Cello right now. And so I do believe it will have a tweet up here shortly to the pool link itself. And there was one priorly tweeted that had the survey form. So if you'd like to complete that survey form and give us an ETH address on there, we'll be able to send that NFT for today's call. This is called a Polygon badge. It's a lot like a POAP, but it operates on the Polygon blockchain as an NFT. And so you'll just check on our Twitter page and you'll see links to the pool page to enter those new savings pools, as well as a link to the blog for all the details. And so thank you again for everyone that, that joined us today. By no means uh, do you have to take off right now. If you have anything else that you want to discuss, I'll leave the space open for just a moment for continued questions or discussion. But those are the details of today's call. And thank you again for joining us. Thank you, everyone.
just a super quick thing. A couple of people in this call mentioned tracking addresses on Etherscan. And I wanted to say that this is a fantastic use case. If you do follow wallets of people who you admire or whose trades you want to follow, that's great. Um, but Etherscan is really not the best tool to do this. I would definitely recommend check out aggregators. So disclaimer, I work at Zerion. Um, you could also look at Zappa, but basically you'd be able to plug in any portfolio and you could also get things like push notifications on trades. So just wanted to give a heads up that there is tooling, um, but we can find tooling that like, you know, has a better UX. So if that's something you're interested in doing, check out DeFi aggregators. Thanks for sharing that, uh, Rebecca. It's, yeah, both of those uh, platforms are very useful, not just for like snooping around, but also keeping track of your own portfolio and what you're doing. So good shout out there. Etherscan is kind of the old school way, right? We've got newer and better tools now. Okay, guys, so with that in mind, I think we just had just a little bit of time there to see if you want to hop it up. Rebecca, I appreciate you sharing that with us. Nothing like checking on an aggregator and seeing that you had something tucked away in an LP that you forgot all about and having that nice rainy day fund revive. Uh, I am going to go ahead and wrap up this space. This will be a recorded space, so this will be available for listening to after the fact. We will also upload this to our YouTube channel for anyone that did not have the opportunity for the time zone. But thanks again for joining Good Ghosting here on International Women's Day. Join those new savings pools on Cello. Join us in the Discord. Good community, good group. We're here to help in boring savings. Thank you guys very much.